Good morning, everybody. Let's start. Welcome along to PCF. Let's stand as we begin to sing. It says in Psalm 47, clap your hands, all ye nations, and shout to God with cries of joy. Come up. Here we go. I see lightning, I hear thunder. Something stirring six feet under. Dead things coming back to life again. I believe there's about to be another resurrection. Praise you, Lord. I see signs and I see wonders Something stirring six feet color The dead things coming back to life again I believe there's about to be another resurrection I see those hands up sleeper he is risen we are risen with him hallelujah hallelujah it is finished jesus is alive see the grave nobody in it Come on, praise him. Our risen Savior, Jesus. He's our champion. If you see, if you see what I see, that the grave is empty, then you know what I know. Anything is possible. If you see what I see, that the grave is empty then you know what i know anything is possible do you see if you see what i see that the grave is empty then you know what i know anything is possible if you see what i see that the grave is empty then you know Possible. Anything, anything is possible. Come alive, come alive. Wake up, sleeper. He is risen. We are. Morning, church. How are we all? Us, the two of us, anyway. How are we all? 
just excited to be in God's house this morning. We have our friend, Pastor Colia Amitolia from Nigeria with us. We've had some great, great times on Tuesday and Wednesday in the church this week, really believing that God is going to continue to do His work in our lives this morning as we commit ourselves to Him. So uh, let me pray and then uh, we'll carry on just in work, praise and worship to the Lord. Wasn't that a great kickoff song to just start us off? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, that we can come together in your house this morning. Lord God, we invite you, first and foremost, to be in our midst by your Holy Spirit. Your God, your word guarantees it that you'll be here. And so, Lord God, we join with you and with the angels rejoicing in heaven this morning. Lord God, as we give you praise and honor and glory, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, Jesus is alive. That means anything is possible. If you see. If you see what I see, that the grave is empty, then you know what I know. Anything is possible. If you see what I see, that the grave is empty, then you know what I know. Anything is possible. If you see what I see, that the grave is empty, then you know what I know. Anything is possible. If you see what I see, that the grave is empty, then you know what I know. Anything is possible. Anything, anything, anything is possible. Anything. Come alive. Wake up, sleeper. He is risen. God has ascended amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid the sounding of the trumpets. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our King, sing praises, for God is the King of all the earth. Sing to Him a psalm of praise. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faithfulness. Calling on. I'm calling on the God who shakes, whose love endures through generations. I know that you will keep your covenant. I'm calling on the God who knows this. The one who God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faithfulness. God, I need you. Oh my God, I need 
my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh, rock, oh, rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faithfulness. Calling on the God. Praise you, Lord. I'm calling on the God of Mary, whose favor rests upon the lowly. I know with you all things are possible. I'm calling on the God of David. A shepherd boy courageous I may not face Goliath But I've got my own giants Oh God my God I need you Oh God my God I need you now How I need you now Oh rock, oh rock of ages I'm standing on your faithfulness, on your faithfulness. God, I need you. Oh, God, my God, I need you. Oh, God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh, rock, oh, rock of ages. your faithfulness yes God we welcome you into this place we welcome you into our midst we praise you Lord we say we need you thank you Lord thank you for your faithfulness thank you for your goodness towards us you heard your children You are the same God, you answered prayers back then, and you will answer now. You are the same God, you are the same God, you were providing then, you are providing now. You are the same God, you are the same God. In power, then God moved in power. Now you are the same God, you are the same God. You were a healer, then you are a healer. Now you are the same God, you are the same God. You were a savior, then you are a savior. My God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faithfulness. God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faithfulness. Come on, praise him if he's heard your prayer and answered you experienced his uh, your uh, his healing touch in your life if he's provided for you if he's moved in power in situations in your life come on praise him if 
he is your saviour, then you've got a reason to sing this morning. Praise him. I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh God, poor old God, Jesus, I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faithfulness. Yes, Lord. Yeah, God, we need you and we invite you to be at work in our situations and circumstances. Come and meet us in this place. Come and speak to us. Reveal yourself to us. Come in power, Lord God. You freed the captives then. You're freeing hearts right now. You are the same. God, you are the same God. You touch the lepers, then I feel your touch right now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You are the same. Such a long way, you brought me such a long way. Oh. You're free in hearts right now, you're free in hearts right now. This is a house of worship. 
This is a place of praise Where every demon trembles Where we proclaim your name This is a house of are full of faith. You have our full attention. You have the final say. So come alive. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus, everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We worship you. You know, this resurrection power in the name of Jesus. Let's sing that together. This resurrection power Your blood runs through our veins Your kingdom triumphs over Thank you, Lord. Even the dog is grave Come alive, come alive in the name of Jesus To the feet of Jesus, everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Come alive, come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything. This is a house of miracles. Yeah, we submit to you, Jesus. We exalt your name. We lift your name high above all things. You are king. You are king of kings. hallmark over our church that this would be a, a place of miracles because Jesus is here because Jesus is here thank you Lord praise you Lord hmm. thank you Lord thank you Lord praise you God thank you Lord
Yeah, Jesus, we worship you. There's a table that you prepared for me. In the presence of my enemies, it's your body and the blood you shed for me. This is how I fight my battles with worship and praise. There's a table that you prepared for me. In the presence of my enemies It's your body and the blood you shed for me This is how I fight my battles I believe And I believe you've overcome And I will lift my song up Praise for what you've done. This is how I find my battles. In the valley, in the valley, I know that you're with me. Surely your goodness and your mercy follows me. And my weapons are praise and thanksgiving. This is how I find my battle. I believe, and I believe. Overcome, and I will lift my song of praise for what you've done. I believe. Yes, I believe you've overcome, and I will lift my song of praise for what you've done. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. I'll fight my battles. This is how. This is how I'll fight my battles. This is how I'll fight my battles. This is how I'll fight my battles. This is how. And I believe. And I believe you've overcome. And I will lift my song of praise for what you. Yes, I believe. And I believe you've overcome. And I will lift my song up. Praise for what you've done. Just the voices. And I believe you've overcome. And I will lift my song up. Praise for what you've done. I believe. Yes, I believe you've overcome, and I will lift my song of praise for what you've done. This is how. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. This is how. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. This is how. Yeah, there's a principle in Scripture that when people went into battle, they they brought their praise and their worship before the the, um, the breakthrough. And sometimes in our lives, in our situations and circumstances, we need to do the same. We need to praise God in advance of what He is going to do in advance of that breakthrough so if that's you and your situation praise him this morning before that breakthrough comes it may look like i'm surrounded but i'm surrounded by you it may look like i'm surrounded but i'm surrounded by you 
It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm yeah. surrounded by you. It may look, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded. By this is how, this is how I fight my battles. This is how, this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. Come on, worship Him. We praise You, God of power, God of miracles, God of breakthrough. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Yeah, reveal, reveal that to us, Lord. You are before and behind us. Yeah, reveal yourself to us this morning. Come, Lord God. surrounded by you Lord God your protection is around us Lord God you watch over us Lord God you never let us go Though all your word says Lord that you never leave us nor forsake us and we thank you for that truth in Jesus name I pray Amen, Amen. you may take your seats thank you Lord so I've only got a couple of notices uh, the, the first is that um, at the back of church we've got uh, two books that uh, Kohler has brought with him and um, if you would like to uh, purchase those or if you would just like to invest in his ministry you can purchase the books and not take them um, so I'll leave that with you um, just uh, 10 pounds each we'll sort somebody out somebody will volunteer to uh, to collect the funds um, at the end so um, if, if you just want to um, 
buy one of those two books or bless uh, call around the ministry, then, then please feel free to do that. Uh, we as a church will obviously bless him as he's ministered to us uh, this week. And so we thank you for his ministry and what he's done. Well, what God has done actually, but there needs to be a man of God who is willing to leave his family, to travel the world, to come invest time with us. When we talk about his ministry, it sounds so glamorous. Australia, America, the UK, Ireland. But there's a sacrifice of his wife and three children that allow him to go and, and minister. And, and also um, his wife, Bola, has her own ministry as well that travels um, and, uh, and ministers as well. So we thank God for you, my brother and friend. And uh, we will hear God's word from you in just one moment. Uh, this uh, month's food bank offering is going to be milk. And so uh, UHT Milk, there's a few that have started to uh, arrive on the table. Now, if you brought juice and you still, you forgot it three weeks running, okay, we'll allow you to bring it, okay? So, um, but just a good way of just um, blessing food bank across the city. So please bring your milk. Let's put it on the table. This month we're going to have a lake of milk to send and bless food bank with. So please, um, if, when you're doing your shopping, just think on. Um, you, can, you can buy some milk and that will be great. Uh, this week is small groups. So um, be blessed as you, uh, as you go to small group this week. If you're not in a small group, then please come and see me and I will talk to you about attending small groups and then finally, if you need any pastoral care for the next 10 days, then please do not phone me or Kerry because we will be on a beach somewhere. So Chris and Kate, Jim and June uh, will be available to you. Remember, some of these people have full-time jobs as well. So um, if it's not urgent, then you can wait for me. <laughs> Cola, I've got a rule in church. If somebody phones me at four o'clock in the morning, they better be dying. That's the rule. And if I don't make it to you, I'll see you in heaven. Because that's the hope that we have. Anyway, joking aside, Pastor Cola, I'm going to come and preach the word of God to his brother. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. It's powerful. We pray, Lord God, that we will listen to what you've got to say to us this morning, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Hello. Good. Good to see you all. You know, I like you to do this where, like, let me feel at home like I'm in Nigeria. Look at the person beside, um, on the left hand and on the right hand and tell them how beautiful they are this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are not an afterthought. God take a, uh, a serious time to think about you and form you and planted you in this nation so that you can affect the nations. You see the difference? Like I always say, my father, God, I am made in heaven, assembled by my father and my mother in Nigeria. And dispatched to the whole world. So, so God just happened to assemble you here so that you can be relevant throughout the earth. Yeah. Amen. I want to thank God for my friend again, Pastor Dan and uh, Pastor Kerry and Reverend Jim and Mama June and uh, Pastor Dave and all the leadership of the church. Thank you for having me. Thank you for always having me here. I am so glad to be part of this church and seeing us. Uh, growing to become a force that is taking the city together. Hallelujah. We are not, and we are not just taking our city, we are taking the nations. Hallelujah. So we are taking the nations. I am trusting God that one day we will pray from this altar 
and we'll have a thousand healed in the city and hundred thousand healed in other places. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to share with you briefly this morning uh, before we start ministry. Now, I don't know if you have felt that God has been touching you since Tuesday or you feel like there's a testimony you can share right now. Okay, good. Now, I want to, we, what I will do is we will take testimony. You know why? Every testimony carries with it the ability to reproduce. Every testimony carries the ability. So when you hear that God did it for somebody, the best way to pray is, Lord, where is my portion? Where's my own? Lord, where's my own? That's, what, that's the essence of testimony. So when I share my testimony, I am saying if God did it for me, he can do it for you. He, he, he was the healer then, and he is the healer right now, in this place, right now. Not tomorrow, right now. So that's the essence of testimony, because it makes us to know that, okay, sometimes you feel like my case is not even as bad as that guy. So if God can do it for him, he can do it for me. Testimony simply means do it again, Lord. Yeah. Do it again. Somebody say, do it again, Lord. I can hear you. Okay, so before we start ministering to people, we're going to take testimony. I don't know whether we take it now or we take it in the bit. In the, in the, do you want us to take it? Let's take two testimony now. That will help us to kick start. You put their hand up and wants to give testimony here on Tuesday or Wednesday. On Wednesday. Okay. Can you, can you just come to the front? Okay. It's good. Record this for me. Okay. Nana came in a wheelchair on Wednesday. Say, no, you just say what you want to say. <laughs> Jesus set you free. Is that good? Oh my goodness. Yeah. So, oh my goodness. I work in a school. I don't know why I'm so scared. <laughs> so, um, obviously, me and Sam haven't been coming here very long, but the last three years I've had a lot going on, a lot, lot going on in my life, personal and medical. And I've been praying and believing hard for the last three years. And I've been determined that I'm going to defeat all of this. And on Tuesday we came and Pastor Cola was amazing. And I said to him that I'm ready. And then on Wednesday we came back and he preached again. And I think I scared the entire church um, because he laid his hands on me and I, I was completely delivered. And I mean beyond delivered <laughs> is things came off me <laughs> and I've never felt so well in all my life. <laughs> my eyes have never been so open. We came, excuse me, I fell a little bit of throat. Yeah. We're on TV, so let's, oh, no. uh, <laughs> so let everybody see your face. <laughs> My mother, Nonna, we call her Nonna. She's 92 years old. Wow. And this morning she refused to take the wheelchair. Wow. So we're just going to say thank you, Lord. Thank you that this is the beginning. The beginning. Che sono contenta io di come mi trovo stamattina. Non so, io parlo italiana, non so chi mi capisce. Orri mi dismone per il porto. Thank you very much. She says, This morning I was really happy and she was looking forward to coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll just allow one more. 
Is there one more? Basically, um, I don't know. <laughs> ever since uh, ever since everything all happened, um, what was it Wednesday? You, you, so it, you, you were prayed for, weren't you? Yeah, I never thought I'd be going down like that. Never. <laughs> um, but yeah, I went down. I didn't expect it to be honest with you. Um, yeah, it, it was really good to be fair. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I feel changed. I do. I feel changed. I feel really changed. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I feel. Um, I feel. Yeah. What have you been listening to? Uh, Kirk Franklin. Yeah. Yeah. I got rid of all my other rubbish stuff. Yeah, it's just not about um, not very good things. Okay. But yeah. 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 Good man. Just been a lot. Feeling a lot better. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Hallelujah. <laughs> now we can go to work. If God did it for her, for her, for him, then you are the next one in line. Yes. Yes. You are the next one in line. You have no reason to allow the work of the enemy to stay forever in your body. Yes. That the enemy come against you is not a news. The thing that will surprise God is that you allow the enemy to stay in your body. This get my language? Yeah. That your attack is not a problem. That you allow it to stay is the problem. Yeah. So you can tell the devil no more. You are not coming near my dwelling. You are not coming near my family. You are not coming near my business. You are not coming near my body. You are not coming near my spouse. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You are not, I'm not going to allow you to have the last saying. One of the songs we sang said, he has the final saying. I'm not going to allow the devil to have the final saying in my life. And if you, don't, if you don't remember anything, never forget this I said on Wednesday. Doctor only detect the facts. They don't detect the truth. And facts are subject to change. Facts can change. Paul, that came here the other time, Paul said, the doctor said, you will never, his wife will never carry baby. But what happened? When God stepped in, Facts change. Yeah, yeah. Whenever God step into facts, it's change. Facts is like feeling. You can't trust it. Because feeling comes, feeling goes. Only the word of the Lord stands forever. You can't trust your feeling. You don't say because you feel somehow, that's who you are. No. Amen. I want to share this morning on some what I call instrument of miracle of faith extenders that God provided. I just show you scriptures upon scripture, and then I give you some testimony from my life, because the spirit of uh, uh, Jesus is the spirit of prophecy and testimony. All right? So I have to share my testimony because so that you can know that I, we're not just talking about theory, we are not just talking about what will be. We are talking about what Jesus has done that you can take the benefit of it today. You can take the benefit of it. Somebody did the hard work. I enjoy the benefit. That's what they call inheritance. Somebody did it. I enjoy it. If you work for it, then it's no more inheritance. But somebody did the job. I enjoy the benefit of what somebody has done, then it becomes inheritance. Yeah. Hallelujah. So I'm just going to go straight to what I want to teach you this morning, and I will give you a practical example. I want to help you so that when you see Pastor Dan applying anointing oil on you, you will not just see like one oil from the Sainsbury or <laughs> Tesco. Now, once we pray on this oil, it chooses from becoming ordinary oil. Why? From the book of Exodus, God himself initiated the oil. And God spoke about what the oil should contain. 
And I don't have time to explain that because of time today. I'm just trying to push into something so that when you, uh, some years ago, I always go around with small bottle of oil like this. Why? Because if I meet the devil on the road, I'm going to kick him out of my way. But I'm not going to go around looking for the devil. Do you understand me? But if you cross my way, I will deal with you right on my way. So I go around with one of the bottle. And several times when I go to the airport, they want to scan my bottle. <laughs> so I began to leave. But because God initiated it, and I will show you scripture. Um, let's start this way. Um, James chapter number 5, verse number 14 to 17. Okay. I don't know why my mind always goes like the Bible is going to be displayed. I think we used to have the Bible display before. No? James chapter number 4. Sorry, 5. James, James, James. So let's start from do we, let's start from this one. Because we're going to anoint you as well. Verse, chapter number 5 from verse number 14. I'm reading from NLT. Uh, let me. Are any of you sick? Now, how many of you noticed in any version you read it, that is like a question mark? How many of you noticed it? How many? Are any of you sick? Why, this, why, why was the question mark? The question mark is simple. Because we are not supposed to be sick. Oh, you didn't get it. <laughs> so, is that we are not supposed to be sick. So, is that saying, are any of you sick? Now, that's why I look at some believer. So, why don't you come to church anymore? When I was sick, nobody visited me. You are not supposed to be sick. That is not a gold melder. Amen. <laughs> Remember when I say, we are living stone. So it's like, are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with what? Oil. In the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offer in faith will heal the sick and the Lord will make you well. Take note. Is any of you sick? I am not supposed to be sick. But in case you believe some lies and you fall sick, call for the elders of the church or the pastors. Let them come with oil. Let them anoint you, anoint that sick person with oil. Why? If I anoint Harley, I have done two things. And I will show you very soon. I anoint her with oil, then she can feel my hand. Because you cannot anoint somebody with oil without touching the person. Your hand will touch the person. And the Bible says, I shall lay my hand upon the sick. And they shall recover. So Ali has right to go home even if she doesn't feel healed. She can now say, call her as anoint me with oil. Therefore, I am healed. Because Kola is not the one that will make her well. Kola's responsibility is to anoint her with oil in faith. And then the Lord, say the Lord. Lord. I can't hear you. Lord. The Lord will make her well. Hallelujah. Not Kola. Yeah. The Lord will make her well. So why is the oil... The essence of the oil is as she goes home, she may still not feel good in her body, but she has something to confess with her mouth. Hallelujah. She may not know all the Bible verses, but she can say, call her, lay his hand on me, anoint me with oil. Therefore, I'm healed. I believe, call her, anoint me with oil. You see, the problem is, some of you, once you are anointed with oil, you go home and say something contrary to the spirit of the oil. Because the oil is the symbol of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, the yoke, uh, by the reason of the anointing, 
the yoke shall be, uh, the burden shall be lifted off your shoulder and the yoke shall be destroyed. So what happened? The oil has capacity. It is God mystery like a vehicle, and you use a good word praying this one, like a vehicle through which the healing power of God can flow through. Are you still with me? So when we anoint with oil, we don't just place ordinary oil on you. You know why it's not more ordinary? Because we are anointing you in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. So because it is in the name of the Lord, God is committed to make sure you are raised back to life. Because Jesus said, whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, my Father will do it. That word ask is not like prayer. Two things Jesus said. It says one about prayer, the other one I think I've explained that here before. Another one is not by prayer. Whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, it means whatsoever you demand in my name, my Father will honor it. So when I say I anoint you in the name of the Lord, be healed. What will the Father do? The Father will honor that. But call out, what about if I don't feel like it? That's why I anoint you with oil so that you can have something to address your feeling. Yeah. <laughs> do you understand me? Yeah. Now I can say, oh, I feel the hand of Pastor down on my head the other time. He anointed me with oil and he said, be healed. Therefore, I'm healed. I pray for a lady in Washington State. I think I've shared the testimony. And she came to the phone and said, oh, oh, Kola, it's worse when I get home. I said, the reason why it's worse, the reason why it is worse when you get home was because you keep on confessing the symptom rather than the fact that Kola has laid his hand on you. Yeah. So I told her what to do. I prayed with her the following day. She went home, Kola has laid his hand upon me. Therefore, I'm here. The following day, she came dancing like mad. She came healed. Now, hardly can anything happen now in the state. She's going to write me immediately. Why? The oil is the medium through which God. You can see it, you can feel it. You can see it and what? You can feel it. So your feeling is addressed. Your feeling is taken out of the way. So that was it. Is anyone sick? Is anyone sick? Because we are not, so, see, I'm not supposed to be sick. Oh, you are not too bold about it. Say it, let me hear you. Say, I'm a stone. Say, stone, don't get sick. Okay, now. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? So when you begin to speak like that, the devil knows you are stepping into a new territory. He knows, because see, any time you meet the devil in the realm of feeling, the devil will defeat you. But any time you meet the devil in the realm of faith, he's defeated already. He's defeated already. So why the oil? So I can have something, address my feeling. Now I can say, Pastor Dan has laid his head upon me. He has anointed me with oil. Therefore, I am healed. Now, my feeling may not change immediately, but I have something to confess. I've got something to confess. Now, I'm not going to listen to those who ask me, how do you feel? Because as a dad has already addressed my feeling by anointing me with oil. So see, this is where the problem comes. I always like to help you so that you can understand where you destroy the thing. When Pastor Dan lays his hand and anoints you with oil, the healing virtue in the oil is released upon you immediately. But this is the problem that your neighbor, the guy that sits beside you that asks you, how do you feel now? So immediately you begin to explain your feeling, you have destroyed the flow. Right. <laughs> Did you understand me? Yeah. Especially women, you like to explain the feeling to your husband. <laughs> Say, well, I may not tell anybody in the church, I'm going to tell you, my dear. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I don't really feel good. <laughs> So now what happened? You destroyed the flow. So my friends, so next time you hear that we want to anoint with oil, we are not just anointing with oil, we are anointing with oil in the name. 
of the Lord. There's a song I like in our, in our country. One of the co- uh, popular singers sang it. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Breathe your name. Just breathe your name upon me. You know, so, so what? I anoint you with oil. What? Not in the name of cola. If I anoint you in the name of cola, you won't get any healing. But if it's in the name of the Lord, and we pray the prayer of faith, the Bible says the Lord, the Lord, the Lord will raise that person from the, from the sick bed. Hallelujah. Are we okay? Are you sure? Number two, let me go to lane of hand since I've explained that with other one. Mark chapter number 16, verse number 17 to 18. You know what I'm trying to do this morning? When you understand all these little things, you can live the rest of your life sound. 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 The rest of your life, you can live it sound. You can announce to the devil, you come against me with this sickness, I am coming on the other side with healing and breakthrough. I'm coming out with testimony. Oh, thank you, Jesus. What? Um, Mark 16. Mark, not Matthew. Mark 16. Verse number 14, I think. Okay, let's start from seven. Uh, se- let's start from seven ten because of time. Yeah, these miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. How many of you believe here? This is not just for pastors. This is for everybody that believe. Everybody that believe. This miracle will accompany those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name. How many of you believe that there are demons? Don't look at me that way. <laughs> you know what? Let me tell you a good thing about demons. Demons like it if you don't believe they exist. <laughs> so, you're not believing it. Only empower the demon to torment you further. So, then the demon can carry out his work in your life. The fact that you don't believe a thing does not deny its existence. In fact, I don't believe that there is atheists. You know why? I tell the man in America, I say, what do you believe that I'm an atheist? I say, you are not. I say, you know why you call yourself atheist? You try to deny what exists. You try to form a philosophy. You deny something that exists. Like I said, I don't believe there is Pastor Dan. It's because there is Dan. Atheist. Atheist, yeah. I don't believe that as fast as done. It's because I believe inside me that that is done. So demon like it if you don't believe. But the Bible says that you will cast out demons in the name of the Lord. Say, I have power power to cast out demons demons in the name of the Lord. Lord. Now, look, most sickness are demonic in nature. Most sickness. I'm not saying all. Some is because you do not undo your body very well. But most sickness are demonic in nature. Most, what do you want to say about one-year-old boy or gay, a child that is just born and was born deformed? What do you want to talk, say about aut- autism? What do you want to say about any sickness that is a devil? And let me tell you the truth about sickness. I read, said it in one of my books. Sickness is the forerunner of death. Did you hear my English? Sickness is the forerunner of death. Death. Sickness only comes to knock the door to see whether you are inside so that death can enter. Every sickness has ability to kill. No matter how small, there is no small sickness. Every sickness has ability. When COVID started, we thought it's just one of those things. 
But you can see how many people COVID has sent to hell. How many lives COVID claim? In some country, over a million. Hallelujah. And people ask me, one of my friends asked me from the state, I said, why is this COVID not so strong in Africa? I said, well, I will tell you primarily, people pray. That's what I'll tell you, because I know I'm part of a lot of prayer mobilization. Two, I go to all our churches, all my spiritual son churches, I tell them, start communion every day. Start this communion every blessed day. Three, for almost six months, I made sure I didn't watch news. Because faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. (laughs) So what was I doing? I was protecting my heart. The Bible says, guide your heart jealously for out of it flow the issues of life. So I guide my heart. I'm protecting my heart. I didn't want to hear all the bad news. So I guide my heart. Anyway, let me quickly tell you, the media is not there to tell you good news. The only place you hear good news is in the church. (laughs) Because good news don't sell outside there. Bad news sell. So that's what the media does. And I don't care which channel you watch. It's the same thing. (laughs) Don't come and tell me, well, my channel is a little bit... Balance. It's not about balance. It's about what they're sending. Amen. So the Bible says, look at it. Okay, let's go. This miracle sign will accompany those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name. They will speak with new tongues. I don't want to go there today. because Some of you doesn't believe in new tongues. But they will be able to undo snake with safety. And if they drink anything poisonous, it, will, it won't hurt them. They will be able to place their hand on the sick. And they will be healed. So the second thing is laying of hand. Laying of what? Laying of what? I can tell you, I I think I've explained it. While I'm preaching in meetings, not just in our church, in meetings, it has happened in the state. I'll be preaching and I'll touch somebody on the road, on the highs like this. And the next thing you hear is that, who, I can walk. What happened? During that time, the energy of God was flowing through my hand. He said, the energy of God, not color, the energy of God, the anointing of God was flowing through my hands and said, you shall lay your hand upon the sick and they shall recover. Your hand is not ordinary. You can lay that hand upon the sick and see them recover. Come on, are you a believer here? Say, I can lay this my hand on their sick and they will recover. The Bible did not say the type of sickness, so don't say, oh, I don't like laying it on cancer. I like headache. (laughs) No, 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 no. Any kind of sickness. You know why it's any kind? Because at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. I always tell people, the day a sickness has a name is the day it exposes its weakness. Why? Because that name must bow to the name of Jesus. COVID is a name. Cancer is a name. It must bow to the name of Jesus. You see, the problem is you listen to people more than you lay your hand upon them. You pity their situation more than you lay your hand upon them. You cancel them more than you lay your hand upon them. Are you still with me? I will give you an example. You might have, you might recollect this of, we were at Ashford, Kent, to start School of Supernatural in the evening, I think it's in the evening. Then we're standing at, inside the church building, but not at the auditorium, uh, Robert's place before. And this guy was coming in, we didn't know that he has heart problem. Are you still with me? So he was coming in and was like, then we asked, what's wrong with you? He said, I'm coming for, for, the, uh, for the service here, for medical. And we first said, okay, the service is off. Like, go and wait. Then suddenly, two of us just spoke. 
come back. It could happen now. You know, you don't have to wait till the service begins. Now you come now. Let's do it right now. We lay hand on him right there. The guy was slain in the street. The guy got up, healed perfectly. Every time we go back to that place, the guy is suddenly healed. So the last time I was there about three years ago, he's in the same church, now playing judo. And the guy always tells people, you don't need to wait for the service. <laughs> why? That's how God met him. We just feel like, oh, why did we point him to the service? No, come back. It could happen right now here. Right now here. You don't have to wait until the service begins. You shall lay your hand upon the sick. And they shall recover. That's why a lot of time. People want to hold my hand. Not because I'm God, but because they feel that they know that the energy of God will flow. You see, Western nation, let me help you. The problem is, some of you have seen tortilla more in this hand. You've seen tortilla. Yeah, in this hand more. That you don't understand when the man of God lays his hand on you. Immediately lay the hand in the name of the Lord. It's no more ordinary hand. It becomes an extension of the hand of Jesus. Did you understand? It becomes an extension of the hand of Jesus. That's why I said you will lay your hand upon the sick and they will come out. But see, once in the name of Jesus, that hand is not his hand anymore. It's an extension of the hand of Jesus. That's why I always call it faith extender. Why? I can go home and say, Reverend G must lay his hand on me. Therefore, I'm healed. Therefore, I'm healed. I didn't feel like it. Now I can say, Jim, lay his hand on me. Reverend Jim, lay his hand on me. I believe he's your servant. You see, I'm connecting my faith to somebody, even though my faith is low. Some years ago, I preach a message in our church. My faith can't carry it, but mercy say yes to me. Do you hear what I said? My faith can't carry it, but mercy. 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 Speak English, people. (laughs) Mercy say yes to me. Now, even if your faith is low, once hand is laid upon you, you can have something to begin to confess. Hand has been laid upon me. Hand has been laid upon me, therefore I'm healed. Therefore I'm healed. I told you on, on Wednesday, even about the oil, I feel a pain in my back. I'm an office member. And I said, Devil, if you can't finish the job till I get home and I can pour the oil there, you are finished. And when I get home, took the oil, whoo, and it's like something just removed that pain from my back. I never returned to today. What happened? I put my faith, I put an extension, an extender of my faith, extension of my faith on something. You shall lay your hand upon the sick, and they shall recover. You see, some of you, before you rush your child to hospital, or your wife when she's sick, first of all, lay your hand upon her first. Hello? Ah. Lay that hand first. Before you begin to complain about anything, ask yourself, what is my hand doing? Lay that hand first. You shall lay your hand upon the sick and they shall recover. Hallelujah. Are we together? Okay, let's keep going. Hallelujah. Let's, I'm rushing. Um, um, let me do Ankichi. No, I've got one here. I will show you scripture. Acts chapter number 13, verse 12. Acts. thirteen twelve. Where is it? 13? Oh, is it 13? Is it 13? Oh, Jesus, is it 13? 
Wow. Give me. Reverend Jim West says the blood and catch him out of the body of Paul. I think I wrote wrong one there. Have you seen it? Act 19. Act 19. Yeah, it's 19. I want to write. 1912, please. Act 1912, please. So, look, at, let me start from, um, from 11. Now, God walked on usual miracle by the hand of what? Paul. By the hand of Paul. So that even handkerchief or apron were brought from his body to the sick. And the disease left them and the evil spirit went out. Did you hear what I just read? God wrought unusual miracles through the hand of Paul. So that the handkerchief were brought out of Paul and the places upon the sick they were recovering and the places where demons had been tormenting people and the demon was chased away. I'll give you some testimony. Uh, people have taken the, my handkerchief, even though I've sweat on it, I've blown on it, people take it home and they come back with testimonies. I've, I'll give you an example uh, 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 of somebody in, in the U.S. You see, well, I'm giving a Western example. You can write and find out. Angie, Angie Cole, his son is a good friend. He's a, a drug. Yeah. He was a drug addict. Drug one. You, you. Tyler is a close friend now. Completely clean. What happened? I told him, give me an handkerchief. I gave my handkerchief to them after I finished. Put it under his bed. Then make sure you give him communion. The moment the handkerchief enter the room, the boy begin to feel the need to be free. As he began to take communion, he began to lose appetite for drug, for cocaine, immediately. No demon can stand where an anointed handkerchief flow out. Why is it anointed? Because it is blessed in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord always make the difference. Yeah. Two. Two, this might be difficult for you Westerners. What an anointed man of God use also carry the residue of that anointing. It becomes a medium or a vehicle, like you said this morning, through which God can communicate to people. Oh, you didn't hear me. Another bunker came to where we used to stay in Calabar. The, the rich man was paralyzed. He was taken to the U.S. Nothing could happen. So his wife phoned him and said, we succeeded in making another bunker to sleep on our bed. So what did they do? Make sure you do not wash the bed sheet that bunker used. Make sure nobody entered the room. So they flew the man back to Nigeria, put him on, bunker bed, on the bed in his own bedroom, and then the bed sheet bunker used, the man will rope it on, around himself every day. Every day. Every day. One day, strength enter into his leg. Strength enter into his hand. And that's how the miracle happened. Bunker does not even know. Rana Banke. He does not even know. He has preached and go. Because see, the residue of that anointing rub upon the thing. This is why you must be careful to call anything common. They took handkerchief out of Paul. The sick were healed. Demons were chased out. A Nigerian was in the U.S. a few years ago. He's still there. He's a citizen there. And I think I've given this testimony here. He couldn't perform for years. And uh, the wife, somebody linked the wife to me. As I was preaching, I felt like giving them my suit. So I gave my suit. I said, give me my suit. The wife quickly ran back to the state. And gave my suit to her husband. 
Immediately the man put my suit on. The rest is history. <laughs> the man did a good job. <laughs> so I never see the man. I'm seeing the wife for the first time. But God that called me traveled with my suit. Do you know what I'm saying? God that called me traveled with my suit. <laughs> said, travel with my, with my suit. You see, I am too sure of one thing. Listen to me, please. Jim is not so dull that God will call him without giving him some promises. That's right. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Same with that. Now, God always keeps to that covenant. The covenant he made with him when he called him, God stayed true to it. What was draw me towards you in more in IFM? The hem of his garment. The, the hem of his garment ministry. Why? That become a medium through which God can flow. Jesus, when Jesus was alive, the woman said, if I can only but touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. Are you still with me? So this cloth today is not ordinary cloth. It's a miracle cloth. It's a cloth that no demon. I've given my handkerchief to people where demons were raining. I said, put my handkerchief there. Let me see the demon that can stay there. Because it's no more an ordinary handkerchief. I give it to them in the name of the Lord. Are you still with me? Yeah. Ah. Are we still good? Yeah. That's why I'm showing you scripture. So that you don't say, oh, it's not in the Bible. It's African thing. <laughs> number four. Or five, whatever number we are. <laughs> prophetic utterances. What do I call it? Prophetic utterance. That's when I stand on the pool like this and I say, be healed. Be healed. Authority. Be healed. Be delivered there. And I'll show you scripture. All right? Prophetic utterances. Prophetic utterances. When the man of God can speak with all boldness. That's why the Bible says in the book of Acts and Apostles chapter number 4. He said they were speaking the word of God with boldness. One of the principal instruments of miracles is boldness. I've dragged people out of wheelchair, not because I saw angel, but boldness. Not because I hear voice. I just trust that God will meet up with me as I'm dragging the person. We're in Port Angeles, uh, preaching for uh, Revolution Church. Myself and my wife, and I said, America, swallow your pride. <laughs> Rise up from the wheelchair. So many people were on the wheelchair. Young people. Get up from the wheelchair. Let God be God. Then my wife walked towards a man. The church is, was bigger in terms of auditorium. My wife walked towards a man very far. I never know when she went there. Maybe I will have canceled her wrongly. She pulled the man up. The man fell down. She pulled second time. The man fell down. She pulled third time. The man fell down. I was, listen to me carefully. I was going towards her to tell her this is Western world. If he like it, let him stay. <laughs> I don't want trouble. <laughs> but this God is a faithful God, like we sang. As I was going towards her, as I take some step towards her, almost getting to her to speak into her head. The man stood up finally and began to do like this. The man ran throughout the church. Well, you know what the man said? You want to hear what the man said? Yeah. Cola, you and your wife, you are sure good doctors. <laughs> That's what he saw. <laughs> if you see, because he needs some teaching to know that it is the God behind the call. Yeah. Are we together? Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Prophetic word. Be healed. That's why when you come to church, you don't come to whisper to your neighbor. You visit after the service, not during the service. Well, you didn't hear me. 
<laughs> I don't like somebody whispering to me when I'm worshiping. Or I'm, don't distract me, boy. I'm here for God. And I like that song, God, I need you now. I always tell our pastor, I need God just like any other person. Just like any other person, I need God. So once I stand, <laughs> I, don't, I want my distraction to be very, very minimal. Some of you will see why my phone rang the other time now. I hope. Ah, don't distract me. I'm here now between me and God. When you are with your wife inside, do you want anybody to knock the door? Same thing when you're with God. Yeah. It's a time you want God to breathe upon you. Yeah. 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 Come on. That's why you have to listen. Why do, you, why do I have to listen to every prophetic utterance? I can go home even when my faith does not work and say, Pastor Dan said I'm healed. Now, he didn't lay a hand. He didn't anoint with oil, but he spoke a word. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see He spoke a word. When I started doing crusade, and I mean big crusade, I met one of my mentors. Right in the mechanic workshop. Now, I know mechanic workshop here is dirty, but in Africa it's more dirtier. <laughs> All right? So, I met him. I knelt down, and he looked at me. He said, son, as a warrior, you shall not be wounded. I've done crusade in terrible places. I have never been hurt once. One. Every crusade I will announce, even the one I did in January, I will announce, I am a son of the prophet. It has been said over me that I shall not be hurt. See, he has said it over almost 40 years, but I still remember what he said. Just like I remember my Bible. You see, the problem is, when Jim spoke or... Uh, you see it like the other word that you are speaking. But when they are under the influence of the anointing, the whole thing has changed. You must take serious what they say, like you take the word of God. I'll give you an example before I show you what. Some years ago, one of our members was in a mental hospital. Mental. Mental hospital. Terrible case. I was in the state. They didn't want to tell me. They've done all they know how to do. My wife has prayed, Pastor Isaiah has prayed, the form prayer team. They did a good job, but she was still there. She doesn't recognize anybody. She doesn't recognize her husband. She, she, they have to drug her to sleep. Her hair, she's becoming violent. She's still in the church today, one of my strong, committed people to today. As I landed at the airport, I called. I said, where's she now? They said, she's in the hospital. And that is Federal Government Hospital. I said, when I get to Ibado, I want you to drive me straight to the hospital. I said, Dad, you are tired. You need to rest. I said, no, I want to go and discharge her. Amen. See what I said? Yeah. I want to go and discharge her. That's she see. We got to the hospital. They have FT men that guide the room. I don't know here. They have FT men. So they said, you want to see her? I said, yes. That time they drug her, she was sleeping. As I got there, close to her, I, all I said was, daughter. God took it over. She heard my voice from the far off. She opened her eyes and said, Papa, you are back? She got up from the bed and kneeled down to greet me. I gave her a big hug. I tell the doctor, please release my daughter. The following day, she was discharged. Never to go back there till today. Amen. Till today. Till today. Last year, November, in our conference, our husband was crying. She had a testimony. That all the papa said was, daughter. And she, she opened her eyes. Papa. See, while I was coming, I have been praying. Lord, I am going to discharge her. That devil is a liar. 
Now, when you come to church, make sure you open your ear very well. Don't get distracted. Get what if, for example, if the pastor Dan said, this week you will prosper. Do not allow any devil in hell to shit you out of being prospering. If anything goes wrong, tell the devil, it has been said over me in the church that I will prosper this week. Come on, do you see the difference? You see, some of you just forget, oh, Dan, Dan says some good words. Prophetic words are not good words. They are words spoken under the inspiration of the anointing. They are not good words. Good words doesn't do you much good when challenges of life come. Are you still with me? I can give you testimony, testimony, testimony on that. I'll show you scripture. Mark eleven twenty three, 23, Psalm 107, verse 20. Mark eleven twenty three. 23, that's a popular one. So I just say to this one thing, let, let's read it. Mark eleven twenty three. Sorry. Uh, where are you? Where is 23? Here. Thank you. For as, for as surely I say to you, whosoever say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things he says will be done, he will have whatsoever he says. Take note. He said, whosoever shall say to this mountain, not whosoever shall describe the mountain. A lot of time we describe the mountain. You say to the mountain, you don't describe the mountain. You say to it. Yeah. You don't describe it. You don't say, oh, Pastor, that, if you know how big the mountain is. <laughs> and that's what we do so much of, most of the time in the church. We try to describe the sickness. Yeah. How many of you have seen people who know how to describe sickness until you two you fall sick? <laughs> oh, I'm telling the truth. Some people, when they describe their sickness, even the pastor will be sick immediately. So what do I do in our church? When you are describing to me for so long, I say, stop it, mom. Let's pray. I don't want you to hinder my faith now. You are going to a level where... That's why sometimes it's difficult for a husband to stand for his wife. Because the wife wants to tell you all the story. All the story. So, so exactly 1 a.m. It started. 1 p.m. 2 p.m. This is how it goes. The other say, let's pray. Say, let me finish. <laughs> let me finish. So I want to tell you all the story. What you have done is by the time you finish telling all the story... You have killed the man's faith. Yes, yes, yes. So the man is as weak as you. Yes. Prophetic utterance. Boom. A word spoken. That's why if you come, I'll speak over people. I command any sickness against your body to go right now. You see, I am releasing a prophetic word. I am releasing a word that is capable of bringing miracle into their life. Psalm 107 verse 20 he said, the Bible says, he sent his word. Is that in your Bible? 107 verse 20. He sent his word, and his word healed them. What does he do? He sent his word. What does he do? Yes. What does he do? Yes. What does he do? Yes. So sometimes instead of complaining about that sickness, release word. I am free from this sickness. I am healed. I am delivered. Jesus paid the price. Satan, you are not putting it upon my body anymore. Release the word. But some of you, you carry the X-A, the X-ray around more than you carry the word of God around. Release the word. Speak a prophetical. Speak a word. He sent his word and his word healed them. What does that man say to Jesus? He said, Jesus, look, just speak a word and my daughter will be healed. And Jesus said, I have not seen any kind of such a great faith in Israel. Speak a word. Speak a word. Prophetic utterance. Prophetic word. Word that is inspired. I am not talking. See. Let me quickly explain this. Prophetic utterance is not that people come and begin to tell you what they saw. I saw two angels. One with feather. No, 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 no. When people are sick, they don't need that. They need healing. What is gospel to the poor, if not prosperity? 
What is gospel to the sick, if not healing? What is gospel to the sinner, if not salvation? At that time, I don't need vision. Oh, I saw an angel who was dancing over you there. That's not what I want now. I don't need angel now. Now, does angel carry out healing? Yes. But I don't need somebody who will see vision now. I need somebody who can speak a word over my life. When Saul, goat was missing, or whatever cow you call it, that his son said, is there a man of God in this city? Who God still hear his voice? They were looking for a man of God that God still hear his voice. Hello? I know God still hear my voice. How many people God still hear your voice? <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. Now, so, I want to round up this way. Because I want to talk about Kamuni a little bit. Now, this is what I tell people. When it seems all my faith is gone, another thing. This is the final dose that God gave. Why? In Exodus, after all the miracles that Pharaoh would not let them go, what happened? Pharaoh has to let them go when it comes to communion. Now, I'm not selling book, but I always tell people, read my book on something about the blood, over and over. And I can tell you testimonies upon testimonies. One of the people that has bought, if not up to 50 on Amazon, from something about the blood, will be Hanji. One man that asked me to come to their church last time was on a sickbed. Hanji sent the book, something about the blood. The man read it over and over. Hanji will go and take communion with him. God healed the man. The doctor has told the man, you don't have a chance of surviving. And he said, there's a book I want you to read. Listen to me. I don't care how terrible the sickness is. That sickness cannot stay when communion is taken by faith. Call her, how many times will I have to take communion? The Bible says, as often. As often. Say, as often. What does that mean? Frequent. Frequent. If you like, take it three times in a day. If you like, take it every day. As often as you need it. Keep taking it. Keep taking it. Keep taking it. Until you see. The Bible says, until you see. Uh, until you see that. Uh, uh, I want to use the Bible word. 11, 1 Corinthians 11. I forgot how the Bible put there. It's talking about until the reason for the death of Jesus is fulfilled in your life. Yeah. His death, when Jesus hung on the tree, he took all your sins, but not just all your sin. He took all our sicknesses yeah. so that we can live our life sound and healed. Yeah. So that our body can be healthy. So that our strength will not reduce. Amen. So this, I always tell you, this is the sure anti-aging agent. Amen. You want to stop aging process? Get addicted to this. Get addicted to this. I tell them in our country, you don't fall sick because you are old. No, at least you are not as old as God. We can't call you ancient of days. What happens is you need to know this will renew whatsoever that is going wrong in you. When every explanation fails and your faith can't carry anything, call for call for communion. I can tell you things that happen on this before I get home, before I left home on this trip. They will bring some sickness to our office. Naturally, my faith will not be there. I will say, look, let's take communion. Because now if I begin to pray, ah, let's take communion. My friend, this is a medium. Jesus said, my flesh is meat indeed. He said, my blood is drink indeed. He said, whosoever eats my flesh and drink my blood has life in him. What is sickness? Sickness is you dying gradually. When you are dying gradually, what do you need? Life. Jesus said, if you eat it and drink it, 
life will enter into you. My friend, when life enters, sickness go. Whatever is destroying your body disappear. Are you still with me? In text, in text as a woman. Okay, let me give my personal one. This year, one of the nurses in the church, I don't know why she came. She came and just said, Papa, I want to test your, your BP. He said, because you have been working hard. So she came and measured my BP. I said, ah, it's a little bit high. I said, maybe you measure your own and my own together. I said, because your hand is there. It was there. So she went. The following week, she came again. I want to measure your BP. I said, still high. Then as she measured every day, she said, it's growing up. I said, okay. As we have communion service, what did I do? I took communion against the BP. When she came to measure it again, she said, I don't know what you have done. I measured it two days ago, but the BP has gone down to normal. Amen. What do I do? I took communion against it. Are you with me? Yeah. This is the true food it did. Jesus said, if you eat it and drink it, life will enter. The problem some of you have is that when you are eating it now, you begin to try to sense where the bread come from. You miss the power. Nothing concerns you where the bread come from. Wait, wait, I don't say it yet. Wait. But some of you, when you eat now, it looks like Tesco. Who asked you to mention Tesco? You sip the wine... It looked like South African grape. <laughs> you just lose the power. It was a command when Jesus said, he said, take, eat. In other words, don't taste, eat it. Take, drink. <laughs> Once you do that, you've lost the power. You've lost the thing. The Bible says in Hebrew, they partake of it by faith. By faith. By what? By, faith. by tasting? By faith. Huh? By faith. I can tell you testimonies upon testimonies, especially during COVID on communion. So sometimes during COVID, I take communion like five times in a day. Why? I was taking it with different people all around the world. So this person wants to die, call her. I said, no, it's not dying. Bring communion. One day I told myself, I said, my name should have been changed to communion, the way I hate communion. Five times, six times. I'm eating communion with somebody in Australia, communion with somebody in, uh, in Canada, communion with somebody in, in UK, with somebody in U in fact, US. I take communion like three to four times sometimes in a day. Why? Jesus packaged it for our freedom. For our freedom. For our freedom. The reason you have not been seeing results is you have not taken it by faith. This money, I challenge you to release your faith. You see the way I said I did it? I said, this service, this communion I'm taking will regulate my BP. I gave that communion an assignment. I gave it the job I wanted to do. This communion, this service will regulate my BP. What happened? Boom. God did. I gave it assignment. It's not just a ritual. It's a blessing to be received. It's not a church tradition. It is a blessing of, of God to be received. Please, can you stand on your feet? Pastor Dan, can we have more oil? Because what we're going to do this morning, we're going to be very fast. We're going to take the communion right now. And uh, we're going to anoint everybody, not me alone. We just, you just walk and then we just poop, 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 you go. Amen. Amen. Whatever sickness, whatever in your body, I'm telling you in the name of the Lord, you will not see it anymore. So now you can say, hand has been laid upon me, therefore I am healed. Are you ready to lay hand? Okay. We're going to do it together. So what we are doing is that we will lay the hand under three to five minutes.
don't, you don't wait for two people to lay hands. Once one of us lay hands on you, you go. You don't wait. Unless you are slain, we just package you and let the Holy Spirit finish the job. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many of you like to see God doing stuff? Yeah. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> I always tell people, if there is no more miracle in the church, get me out of it. Get me out. I like it. That is what differentiates Christianity from any other religion. The supernatural, the miracle. There is a mosque not far from our church. The imam there, you know what they call imam, like the pastor, there came to our church for prayer. That's good. <laughs> when the imam comes to church for prayer. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to do something. Because I want to be able to practice at home. Amen. How many of you have the gift of one mouth? Let me see your hand. You have the gift of one mouth. One mouth. Just one mouth. One mouth. One mouth. Let me see. Okay. Good. Now say after me. <laughs> now say after me. If I have a mouth and I can talk, I can initiate miracles. Say it again louder. Let me hear you. Now say it in a way that you know that you have a mouth. Say it now I have a mouth <laughs> and I can talk. I can initiate. Say it louder. Say it again. Hear yourself. I'm telling you, that's a big principle I just gave you there. If you can talk, when you are dealing with things like this, it's not time to. You have a mouth. You can talk. You can initiate miracles. Even Jesus has to talk, peace be still, be healed. Amen. Raise the bread up, say after me. Say, Father, I thank you for your body that was broken for me, not against me, so that my own body will not be broken. By your stripe, I've been healed. Whatsoever is wrong. In me, me. is gone, gone. right now, now. in this church, church. in Pentecost Christian Fellowship, Fellowship. right now, now. as I hit this bread that that represents your body, I am healed healed. right now, now. in Jesus' name, name. I believe it, I I confess it, I I initiate initiate my miracle miracle. right now, now. in Jesus' name, name. eat my faith. Don't drink the blood yet. How many of you feel when you begin to speak, faith begins to come up from your inside? That's why if a man can talk, he can initiate. Miracle. So open the... Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. This Pastor Dan. <laughs> if you come to my office, you always see it, uh, the call for communion. <laughs> Once I call any of the staff, they know what I want to ask for. I say, communion, communion. Then they quickly bring the communion to me. How many of you believe that if the blood of Jesus cannot undo it, nothing can undo it? Say, Father, I thank you for the blood of Jesus that was shed for me, not against me. This blood wash away my sin, make me righteous before God. In the name of Jesus, every effect of sin is gone as I drink the blood right now. In the name of Jesus, I am drinking by faith. And no effect 
of sin is allowed or permitted to stay in my body, in my business, in my finances, in my marriage, over my spouse, my children, my grandchildren. As I take the communion, the effect of sin is gone in the name of the Lord, in the name of Jesus. And I thank you by faith in Jesus' name. Drink with joy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. It's your body that you prepare for me. Where's Chris, please? In the presence of my enemy. It's your body that you prepare for me. This is how I fight my battles. You know the Bible says in the book of... Hold on, let me tell you where that song comes from. In the book of Psalm 23, the Bible says, The Lord prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemy. He anoint my head and my cup runs over. Amen. So no devil in hell can stand the table the Lord prepared. This communion table, no force in hell can stand it. Hallelujah. Okay, how are you going to direct the people? Thank you, Lord. Come, sir. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to just speak some prophetic utterance first of all because there are some people who are not in the service, they're watching online. So we're going to stand with people who are online at, at this moment, so I'm going to ask you to stand. And uh, we're going to um, say to the people online, if, if, you, uh, if you need healing in your body right now, well, then we're going to prophetically utter uh, and pray for you. And then we're going to dismiss you. So if you're online, then uh, enjoy the rest of your day as we dismiss you from this service. So if you're online now and you want, uh, you want healing, we're going to prophetically utter that you'll be healed in Jesus' name. So as we stand, we stand with you. If you're online, I want to encourage you to stand where you are. If you are in your bedroom then uh, we'll forgive you, it's 20 past 12, but stand up, uh, get out of that bed, if you're in your front room, then get off your settee, and stand, and we're going to pray with you right now, so this prophetic utterance is for healing in the name of Jesus, for those who are watching online, we pray that you will be healthy and whole in Jesus' name, we pray that God will just do a miracle right now, right where you are, in faith as we speak, in the name of Jesus we pray, and all God's people in the church building said, Amen. If you're online, God bless you. Have a great day in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, so right.